Hey folks, Chad Perkins for Red Giant here for part three of our series on using trap code form. In this lesson, we'll cover drawing curves, formerly known as quick maps. Curves allow us to map properties like opacity, for example, over the form in different ways. And they make almost everything you do with form look better. Now, for me, honestly, they were kind of tough to understand at first, and maybe that's your situation as well. But now they're my favorite part of form. So by the end of this tutorial, you're gonna be using curves like a champ. Now we're gonna start just by grasping the basic concept of mapping by looking at color over. And then we'll talk a bit more about the actual drawing of curves. We'll also look at some additional tools and features in the curves areas. We'll look at animating curves. And we'll wrap up by using curves to create and enhance this vintage movie logo. Now I'm going to start here in After Effects. I've already created a comp that's 1920 by 1080, made a solid, applied form to it. I'll just click the reset button so you can tell this is just default settings of form. Now what I want to do first is open up the base form and I want to get this in a way that we're kind of set up for this tutorial. So we're not going to make anything pretty just yet. We're just going to figure out how these map things work. So I'm going to increase size X, Y, Z quite a bit here. And I'll take particles in Z down to one. So we basically don't have any 3D depth to our particles. We have just one 2D sheet, X and Y, of these particles, and that's it. Let me make that a little bit bigger, just so we can see what's going on. I'm done with base form, I'm gonna close that up, open up particle, and let's make the particle size three, so we can just kind of see a little bit more clear. It may even more than that, maybe five. Yep, perfect. Okay, now let's talk about this uh, mapping situation. We're gonna start by looking at color over. Now, most of the time in form, whenever you see the term over, like opacity over and size over, and you have this axis drop down here, that's an indication of one of the curves. So I could open up size curve, for example, and draw the curves. We'll look at that later. And color over is a little bit different in that there isn't this curve, but it still is a good way to start understanding the idea of mapping. So let's start with color over, and I'm gonna change color over to X, meaning the X axis, which is where this color will be mapped. Now see that activated the color ramp. I just picked an axis, but basically what we need to do is choose an axis first, X, Y, Z, or radial. And this determines how this gradient will be placed across the form. So for example, we have color over set to X. So it's gonna take this gradient from red to blue and map it across the X axis from red to blue. Now we could change the color over to Y, in which case this would map the rainbow gradient from top to bottom over the Y axis. Now we could also do this over Z, but we don't have any layers in Z because of this tutorial. We just have a 2D layer, so it wouldn't do anything in this case. We could also choose radial here, which is really cool. So now we go red to blue from the inside to the outside. Now, hopefully that seems simple enough. It will get much more complex and harder to wrap your brain around as we go. So I know that I'm starting very slowly here. It's only so that you can really cement these concepts in your head before we really get to some more mind bending stuff. So I'm going to actually change this color over to off so it's not confusing. And I'm gonna change the regular color to like a, a mint green color just so we have something kind of pleasant to look at. Um, let's go actually and actually look at one of these properties that we're mapping over. And by the way, you'll see these curves throughout form. So you see size, like size has a curve and the, the telltale signs, there's a size over property, there's a curve property, and there's a curve offset property as well. So we see that with size, we see that with opacity. You'll find it in audio react, you'll find it in disperse and twist, you'll find it in fractal field. You have a lot of options for controlling how to map these different properties across form, which as you'll see is extremely powerful. So I'm going to change the opacity over drop down to the x axis. Now we see no change because as we open up the curve, we see this solid blue chunk. And the blue indicates the maximum value. So basically, this controls, just like with color, how we map the opacity across the form from left to right because we're choosing the X axis. And by having all blue, it means that it's just full opacity. But if I were to, for example, take a dip in the center here and just draw in like a dip, in the center. Then we could see that it creates a dip in the opacity at the center of our form. 
Now I kind of uh, uh, did a little janky job here and left this big spike right here. And so that's what we see right here. We see this little spike of green from my sloppy janky curve drawing right here. But that's okay, because I can click this little smooth button. And every time I click the, the smooth button, this gets smoother and smoother and kind of uh, smooths that out, which is really nice. Now, another thing that I can do, if I want to put back something kind of janky, they are kind of aliased when you draw in here. So don't you know, shame yourself like I did. <laughs> Don't curve shame yourself uh, for making it not completely smooth. What I can do here is if I kind of want this U shape, but it's not ideal, I could then go over to the pen side. And what it will do is it will convert this janky drawing into kind of like Bezier curves. They're not quite Bezier curves, but they're the same type of thing where we have these points that are smooth. And now it's much easier to kind of like fine tune. So typically what I'll do is I'll start with the pencil, sketch something out really quick, then go over to the pen side and fine tune it there. I mean, I was just fiddling right then while I was talking to you, but I mean, look at this. We have a steep drop off here and look at this. We have a steep drop off here. We have a smoother drop off over here on the right side and you see that smooth gradient. So even in the same form, we can have steep drop-offs in opacity and smooth uh, gradations in opacity. That's incredible. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reset this form to get it back to the way it was by clicking this reset button here. By the way, if you ever wanna undo the last action, this is your, little, your helper here. So I can click undo and I could redo that. Undo, redo, I'll just leave it set there. We also have some presets to use. So if you wanna just go back to the beginning, um, you don't have to reset it. You could choose that preset right here that makes it full size. You could also choose to do this, this linear drop off. And this is actually probably the, the preset that I use the most. Most of the time I just want kind of like a smooth uh, fade out here. So um, as we have a, the full graph on the left, we have full opacity on the left of our form. And as that gradually fades out to nothing on the right-hand side, again, because this is mapped to X, we fade out to nothing on the right-hand side of the X axis. If we change the axis from X to Y, just like we saw with the color mapping, we're now going from opaque at the top to transparent at the bottom. In later lessons, we'll use radial a lot. I find this is very helpful because we can make the center of the form opaque and then kind of fade out the edges, which is a really cool effect. Now, in this case, these uh, dots right on the edge are still a little bit too opaque for me. So again, I can go back to the curve here and maybe boost the center a little bit. And then I could bring in this point to have a more steep drop off to transparency, which is something I find myself doing quite a bit with form. So now we have this, which is actually uh, pretty awesome. We have total control over how we want to map this form and where we want things to be opaque. Now, if at some point you want to, let's say you want to flip this. So you want the center to be transparent and the outsides to be opaque. You can click this button right here, which flips the graph, which is really handy. Now you might be wondering why when I flipped it, why the center is still transparent. Well, sometimes what happens is you get kind of like a, the, the equivalent of like a stray pixel. You get like a little piece that is, you can't really see, but it's, it's spiking somewhere and that's what causes that. So you can just kind of click in just like I did and force it to be down at the bottom there. And there you have it. Now I'm gonna flip it back. Now another thing you could do is actually, I'll go to the pencil side for this, but I can click the randomize button. And when you randomize, it just gives you a bunch of random values. So from left to right, actually, no, we're still on the radial axis. So from radial, from the center to the outside, we're now just getting just random opacity values all over the place. If we change this from radial to X, we'd have something that's maybe a little bit more useful. Maybe something we use like something techie. Maybe we did this in the Y axis. Almost looks like an old 1980s computer terminal. Now, another thing we could do is we could actually transfer graphs from one to another. Now, this, this randomizes is really, really, really random, and it would be next to impossible, if not completely impossible, to recreate this on your own. But if I did want to transfer this graph, I could just click the copy button. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this graph. Then I'm going to turn off this graph by going to opacity over and turning that off. And then I'm going to go to size over, and let's map this to X or I guess that was Y we were using. So let's do Y, open up size curve. And now I could paste that 
And now we have the same thing, but with size. And if I turn up size a little bit more, you can see what's going on. So we start, you know, we big where there are spikes and then it goes to smaller points. So this isn't quite opacity, this is size, but it's still, it's quite interesting. And, you know, again, it completely changes the power that you have over these form particles. This is what makes form so magical because these particles just exist and they're there. We can control things like mapping that you wouldn't have access to in a regular standard particle with emitters, with particles that like die because they wouldn't exist like this. It's just the magic of form. Now, um, I want to talk about this right here, the, the size curve offset value. So what this is, is almost like the, the base threshold of the form. And as we increase this, it's almost like we're raising up the entire graph. So in this case, we're going to make everything bigger. If we took this below 100, it's like lowering the baseline of the graph or like shrinking the graph down and it makes everything smaller. So if you want to universally lower the graph or raise it or lower it, uh, size curve offset is the way to do that. By the way, notice that there are stopwatches next to the curve offset values here and also next to the curves. Curves are fully animatable. So if I go out to like a second, for example, click the stopwatch for size curve, go back to the first frame and maybe reset this so it's nothing. Well, then over time, we can see this pattern start to emerge because it interpolates between the full graph and the one that's just random. So imagine the power fading in, fading out of randomness, all that stuff animated over time in form. Okay, let's look at a project here. I'm gonna go to my project where I have another just plain old default application of form, nothing done to it. I'm just gonna click reset just to prove that I have no tricks up my sleeve. And I'm gonna go to base form. I'm gonna change size from XYZ link to XYZ individual. So we have control over the individual properties of the, the dimensions of the form. I basically want these particles just to be full frame, except that I want to exp uh, respect a 239 aspect ratio. So I'm going to change X to 1900, well, let's just say 2000, just to be safe that make sure it clears the sides of the, uh, the document here. And I want this to be in size Y, 800. Again, I want that aspect ratio of a Hollywood movie. I would take particles in Z down to one. And so now we have these cool particles here. Now I want to adjust the number of particles because I want these stripes. I want to, there to be stripes. So normally what you might wanna do is change particles in X to a really high value until you can't see the dots anymore. And that takes a lot of trial and error and is kind of frustrating. And then if you change the form in any way, you can see the dots. What I wanna do is just change the base form from grid to strings, which just draws a line on the X axis. And so I don't have to worry about that. Love it. Now I'm also gonna take strings in Y maybe down a little bit so we can see a little more clearly. Take that down to 50. Uh, this is looking pretty awesome. It's feeling 80s, guys. Open up particle. I'm going to change the color from white to like a super pure 80s red. And I might take this from sphere to glow sphere because that makes those strings more rad, I think. I think the 80s would be proud. I'm going to take size to three. Now, let's talk about curves and making this awesome with curves. What I want is I want the to adjust the size of these strings so that they are big or at least normal size on the left. And then they dip to be very tiny in the center and then thick again on the right hand side. So almost like a U shape, I want to be big, small, big. So I'm gonna to go to size over the X axis because I wanna adjust it from left to right. And I'm gonna open up the size curve and I'm gonna go big, small, big. <laughs> and because I draw like an amazing champion, I'm going to uh, smooth this a few times and then I'm going to go over to the pen side where I have more control here. And I could fiddle with this uh, as, as thrilling as it is to watch a tutorial where somebody is fine tuning something and polishing it. I'm going to spare you that, but uh, basically this is what I want. We have big uh, strings here, they get smaller in the center and then they get big again and that looks pretty cool. Now what I want to do is I want to start opaque at the top and then fade out at the bottom. So I'm gonna go over to opacity. So I'm gonna go to the opacity curve. 
opacity over Y. And I'm going to go to the opacity curve and let's just choose the preset right here, this uh, linear drop off. And so now we have completely opaque at the top, fades at the bottom. But I don't really want a linear ramp for this. I kind of want it to be uh, a little bit different because I don't want to start fading out immediately and then fade out gradually. I want it to be opaque completely in the center and at the top and then just kind of like right at the bottom I want it to fade out. So again, go to my old buddy, the pen, and then we can kind of shrink this so we can bring up the opacity on this side, opacity on this side. Then we just kind of have this steep drop off in opacity at the end. Now I'm gonna turn on my text layer that I've previously made for the uh, Cyborganator. And now that I see that, I see that I'm off a little bit with my size. Like there's a little bit too much space here and maybe not enough space here. So I can go back and fine tune this as needed. Maybe bring this in a little bit, maybe push this back a little bit and can fiddle with it until it's something that I like. And that's good enough for now, I think. Now, in the last tutorial, we looked at the disperse value, which basically kind of lets the particles kind of stray from the grid a little bit, which is a very, very handy property to use. And I wanna use it in a different way. And I wanna use this uh, curve here for this. I'm gonna increase the dispersion. And you see, as we increase disperse, they kind of go all over the place. But I only want the particles to disperse where the text is right here, like almost like a horizontal stripe of dispersed particles. So I actually want to disperse this and why? Because I want them to be normal from top to bottom and then to be dispersed right here and then go back to being normal. So I'm gonna change the disperse strength to over Y, open up the disperse strength curve. And what I want to do is start with nothing. I want to flatten this out so we don't have any disperse. So I'm just going to kind of paint this here like uh, Bob Ross. <laughs> just kind of painting with dispersion. It's good. It's really great. It's really great. Okay. So now I want to kind of spike in the center here. And you can see that as I'm drawing this, it's creating these dispersed particles in the center. Maybe I don't want them that much. There we go. So wherever this spike is, that's where these particles are going to be dispersed, and that looks really cool. Add a little polish with the VHS adjustment and bring back in the aspect ratio crop, and we've got something really special, guys. I encourage you to play with these curves and incorporate them into what you do. It gives you so much power and control and flexibility when you're creating your form. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Shout out to Pond5 for all the super dope music I used in this tutorial.